So let's get back to Brad. I'm not going to get distracted anymore. I'm going to be in the zone. And we're going to give Brad the best advice possible. Um, feedback. Okay. So straight off the bat, Brad, when, or anyone who's like, you show up to a gig, if you have speakers that are different, they will have different balances as no matter what they, um, they might say like, this is their awesome. Like they, they will all have different frequency responses. So what will happen is, um, and when I say frequency responses for the people who are beginners and getting into it, um, it just means that, uh, the bass might be heavier, the mids might be heavier, the trebles might be heavier. The, the speaker has its own natural, uh, depending on the way it's built and the speakers that are used and things like that, like they all affect the sound. Um, and then also like how your mixer interacts with it and things like that. So how you play your guitar with it all affects every single element affects it. Um, I would not like at this point that you're at Brad, I would not stress period. Like already I know where you're at. Like I haven't even looked at this. Uh, it's a thing that's not a big deal. The only thing that is the highest priority when starting a gig is clarity of vocal and play in time. And that's it. Like when you're going into mixing situations, especially as a beginner, do not stress about stuff. Clarity of vocal is the only thing that you want to prioritize. And so that means is you just have the vocal a little like higher than the guitar. And you should be very, the thing about this as well is if you are uncomfortable making your vocals very like prevalent in the mix, that is a insecurity thing that you really have to get over because um, people don't connect with your guitar playing. People do not connect with the chords you play. People do not connect with any of that stuff. They connect with the vocal rhythm of the song. You getting the lyrics correct and then correctly putting them in in how they should vocally be um, like the vocal groove of the song. So like not changing things when it comes to the rhythm of how the vocal should go. The less you do of that, the better. And then it will sound good. Um, anyway, so that's the thing. So just remember they're always going to be different, but just don't stress. Some are like more bass heavy, some are not. Um, and it, you will, depending if you play at the venue all the time or you don't, you will just get more used to it. So hopefully that helps Brad. Um, let's have a listen. So at 20, we're going to go now, if you are just, uh, by the way, so if you are on TikTok, there is going to be a delay or an echo whenever I play YouTube videos. That is a problem with TikTok. I can't fix it. So if you want to be like crystal clear quality, either jump onto Twitch or jump onto YouTube. Yeah, people always, like Tom said, that's great advice. I hate when people F up the vocal rhythm. Yeah, exactly, dude. It is like the, my number one, I fixed it once, dude. I, I don't know how to like replicate the fixing. So I just, yeah, maybe we're going to have to do like a fixing day, but I truly just don't care enough to hurt my head trying to fix that. <laughs> if TikTok wants to make life challenging, then it, it is what it is. All right. Okay. Right off the bat, super, super proud of you, dude. You look professional. You got a college shirt. You know, you look like you're taken care of. You're standing while performing. Sounds great. Um, it looks like you you adjusted the mic uh, to be like a lot clearer in your performance, which is really, really good. Because sometimes with microphones, you have people like hold the microphones up. And so they're lifting their, their chin. As soon as you lift your chin with your vocal, it will cause some form of tension in your neck. So depending on like how you are as a vocalist, some vocalists like fully locked down and they're like, ah, and they're doing like whatever they do. You like, you see those rock stars. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and like, if you can keep it lower, it keeps your chin in a more neutral spot, which keeps the muscles in your neck a lot more relaxed so that when you engage them, you're only engaging them for when you need them, not for um, like literally to hold your head up, which sucks. So yeah, I love it, dude. Looks great. And you got a wireless guitar. Oh, nice. That's good. Fancy. I 
Super proud of you. Like for anyone who just saw what he just did there, he mucked up the guitar part, but he stayed with the vocal rhythm. And that was something that we did talk about a while ago when like I gave him like, this is the list of things to make sure you do these things. When mistakes happen, and by the way, if like big like, like this is the biggest secret, you are going to make mistakes. Like no one does gigs that are perfect. I have literally watched Ed Sheeran in front of like, 50,000 people bomb a song and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm playing this in the wrong key. And then he changed the key, started the song again and crushed. But like, and I've also watched him. He like started a loop one time. At, so these are in two separate shows. So he never changed. Like I watched the show when he was like just starting in the theaters. So he was like, it was like a 10,000 or 15,000 people venue in, um, in America. I watched him play. And he totally bombed on a loop and he was like, oh, yeah, so that sucked. I'm going to do this again. And then he fixed it. And then the other thing is like, and then in the stadium, he did the same thing. He was playing dive and he was like, oh, my God, I, I played this in the wrong key because he was about to get up to the part where he sings the high part. And he's like, "Uh, yeah, that's too high. And then he changed it and then he dropped the key down and he's like, all right, we're good. And he crushed it. It was so good. Um, so just remember from being someone who is a beginner to being the technically like top top zero 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 one percent of the world as an entertainer you will make mistakes like period and the people don't care about the mistakes people care about how you handle them and the best way to handle a mistake when anything's happening on your playing you need to just make sure you do not panic and you just stick to the vocal rhythm the vocal rhythm is like your north star just never lose time Timing is the only thing that will annoy people. People will tolerate bad bad singing. They will tolerate things out of tune. They will tolerate missed lyrics. They will tolerate wrong chords. They will tolerate everything sonically like that except for rhythm. Rhythm is the one thing that if you mess up rhythm, it will disconnect people. So um, like... And I think there's like physiological reasons why it happens because like, you know, we have a heartbeat. We're just so like everything is entwined in rhythm. Everything that you hear in music is to a click track. Like you hear every everything that someone has ever heard on the radio is perfectly in time, perfectly chopped up. So people, whether you like they like it or not, have been trained on rhythm so much, so, so much like like. You, they just know. So the very first thing that they're going to pick up on if you're insecure or you're not ready or you're making mistakes is the second you go out of time. The second you lose control of the time, they're immediately like, well, you don't have control. Like, and then, like you can have bung notes and stuff, but that won't trigger them. They're like, oh, maybe that, that was a mistake. It is what it is. They don't even think that, but their brain registers. It's like, it's all good because they're hearing the song in their head as long as you keep it in time. Many battles I have lost, but you never see me while you're traveling with me. And now, hey, now, don't you... Oh, dude, I need to learn this song. This is a banger. I didn't even know this is crowd. Man, there's so many songs I just don't know. Ah, oh, I need to learn this. It's Um, straight off, your mix is fantastic. Um, at the beginning, you were playing the guitar a bit harder, but then you eased up on the guitar. Fantastic, Brad. Like, this is amazing. Like, and it, people underrate this so much, but it is exactly what you need to do when you're gigging. So many, so many people gigging make this massive, massive mistake. Look, even Luke thinks you sound great. And Luke is like, my harshest critic. He's everyone's harshest critic. He hates bad mixes. <laughs> no one's in my car. There's a hole in the room. My possessions are causing suspicion of death. And I really love how you integrated that rhythm there with your right hand and the vocal. Fam like, I literally said what well, Luke famously. <laughs> Over. 
The only thing I hear, like, at all, like, this is awesome. And for a second, I saw the sign here, and I thought it said Brad, and I was like, oh, my God, they have, like, Brad sign up there. Um, guitar mix-wise, I would see how, like... I would see how you would adjust the the mids. The mids are kind of cutting through. I don't know if it's a playing thing or it's um, how like the mids are like set up on your guitar. But uh, there's a a lot of bright like the prettiness of your guitar is missing. That comes from treble. Um, the presence of your guitar comes from the bass. And when I say bass, um, it's around like 150 hertz. So if you can find like a like a balance between the mid. 100 like so 150 hertz and around like 1.5k to 3k on the on the guitar and then in your trebles like 10k plus is shimmer and that's like the thing that they say shimmer but um yeah when it comes to the guitar mixing i do remember a producer friend of mine i was that like the guy who coached me a lot on my producing stuff he did say, he's like, look, if you are plugging in with a quarter inch jack on your guitar, it will cut the frequencies. Like there's so many frequencies that you're just not going to hear on your guitar that are like past like 7K. So really like you don't have to go too crazy on the treble. You just need to make sure that like that's it. A little reverb. I, I'm not a huge fan of like big reverb on guitars because it will change the vibe. But like that, he might have reverb on there, but if you look at the room, so this is another thing as well. Anytime you're dialing in reverb on your guitar, especially when you're gigging, uh, I kind of YOLO, but I play with very little reverb on my guitar, so it doesn't make a big deal. Um, but look at this room. It's brick everywhere and glass. By the way, this what a fantastic setup these guys have at this venue. This is such a great venue, Brad. Wow. Um, so you've got glass everywhere and you've got um, high ceilings and you've got brick. And it looks like the floors are tiled. So that means it's going to sound big. So pretty much reverb in this room is predicated on volume. So the louder you get, the more reverb is going to be present because the sound's going to bounce around more. So you actually will find that at a venue like this, you could be more ninja and be quieter. And then the reverb is going to be so natural and present because it's going to naturally like bounce around the room in a very, very clear way. And people will hear the reflections. So when I set up my speakers at some gigs, I'll be like, you pay attention to the 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 dimensions of the room and how the sound's going to bounce around. And you're like, ah, oh, if I set up the speaker here, it's going to bomb here and it's going to re reflect over here. And then that's going to serve these people very, very nicely. Um, instead of you just being like, all right, here's the speakers. I'm going to crank it. And like, which is so many people don't really think about that. But the layout of the room is where like the first step, that's what reverb is. Reverb is simulating this. It's simulating the sound of a room. So this would be like a whole reverb kind of thing. Um, you know, high ceilings, you know, hard floors and things like that. So it'd replicate that. And that's where I would say um, experiment with less reverb and then your volume will determine how it goes. So you could even turn down slightly in this situation um, and it would still sound very, very pretty and nice. And that's why you can hear the people just talking. The people just talking you can hear is quite loud. So. Okay, the only thing that I would suggest with your playing, Brad, if we're talking about guitar, like your vocal, I I am always impressed at how much like work you put in and it just keeps getting better and better. I, I just love it. Like the only thing that you need to do is more singing uh, and just do more of the singing where you're getting clearer and clearer with the vocal. Like that, that's it. Like, like you, it's the problem that I have. Like 
I am constantly trying to get my diction so dialed down, get the vocal rhythm so dialed down. I'm getting better, but the thing is when you're when you get to a good level as a as a performer, as a singer, or just in anything in general, any skill, the the time it takes for you to see the result of that hard work is a lot longer. So just the consistency of you singing with like very high awareness to vocal rhythm lyrical with rhythm and diction and like enunciating words super clearly and things like that is only going to just exponentially make you better and that those details the attention to that detail is the only thing that you're going to do on your vocal like you don't have to do anything else like it's already so good this is more like if um if you're like i need to nitpick my vocal and get really really good which is how i see my vocal that's all you need to do and it just oh it's it's so killer it is just bloody awesome i am i'm so stoked with this dude it like we had our chat and you were really like happy about it and like this is just i would be so proud of this as being my first show my first show was not this my first show was garbage like straight up garbage <laughs> And then the only other thing that you need to work on on the guitar stuff, um, you don't have to do this. This is a th me thing. Um, let's see if I can figure this song out, how he's playing it. Du, 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 du. I, I don't know. Hey, now. Hey, now. So what, what would you play here? or whatever it is anyway so basically the only thing that i would start experimenting with on your guitar playing this is going to be a bit more thinking on the guitar front so i wouldn't encourage you to do this uh, when you're gigging, but when you're chilling and you're practicing and, and your goal is I'm now in my practice space and I want to get better, I would experiment with isolating certain strings. So instead of doing like a... I, instead of doing like a... What I do is I'd be like... whatever it is um so i would start finding because you already know these chords right now so like for instance that b chord like you know where all those notes are so all i would do is just pick notes out of them and isolate them so you could do like the top the trebles so you can see there i played a an inversion of the e so I did like a C shape of an E chord, by the way. Oh, you, I'm literally showing you stuff on the guitar. My my bloody thing is in the is in the way. So what you're gonna do? We'll go, go back to the original program of exactly what I just said. B chord, and you play the top half of the B chord, and then you're gonna play like the top half of that A minor, and then that E instead of going down to here, you know you got like an E shape here using the you got an E chord using the C shape. Or the D shape, or whatever. So that's that tribe there. So instead of playing a D, you just slide up to E, and you've got like. So you can see how I'm like creating like the sonic journey with a guitar. And that's just me just picking stuff out and keeping the same rhythm, but I'm I'm creating like a tonal difference. So there's ways that you can create dynamics in your guitar playing where either you like 
jump in and make it louder and softer and that's going to create like a dynamic movement or you can take strings out bring them in so like say you were doing like a verse but you're doing just like three strings like and you're making it really bare bones and you're like or you're just doing like just the bass notes and like those kinds of things in like a second verse really really like you're you're cranking 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 and then you're just like building this up building this up it's like so much space that when you jump in and do it like a full chord in the chorus when you're going oh, hey now hey now and you're doing something like that and you hit this massive full chord that full chord just feels huge and then when you have that that momentum that you've built up <laughs> my my son just cried on the kuba um boom then your vocal is going to be completely spotlighted because you've just created this gigantic crescendo and bam. And then when that is a chorus on the very first line of the chorus, boom, hey now, hey, it will make you feel like you're a band. And this is my hack to being a solo player and it's sounding like a band. Like I don't have the sonic, I don't have the... um. I don't have the instrumentation of a band and that's what like the power of a band can do. You can create dynamic control through your instrumentation and how many people are in the band. But manipulating tension and resolution to extreme levels can create the same feeling that someone would feel from a band. And that's where like I would get people like especially musicians would be like, dude, why do you sound like as like big as a band and it's just you? And I'm not looping. This is me just playing. And I was like, oh, because I understand how to build and like I, I know dynamics. I understand how to create tension and resolution. And that's that's the biggest trick. That's a, a super big hack that for your guitar playing, like that would be the next step I would move. But I think that's it, man. Like the vocal mix is great. The guitar, I would just tweak the balance, maybe bring like um, maybe bring the mids down and then see how it sounds like. You can just remove a bit of like between 1.5K and 3K and it'll probably sound really good. Um, like when I say remove, maybe like take like one or two dB off and then see what it sounds like with the rest of your guitar and um, before you tweak anything else and then maybe do like a one dB boost on your like whatever treble setting you had. But that's, dude, that's so good. I, I love it. 